I am Catherine Murta. Um, my job title is a little long. It's Senior Legal Counsel and Chief Compliance Officer. It's mainly two parts. So I've got a legal side of my role and a compliance side. Let's take the legal side first. So I'm a, a lawyer, but I don't work for a law firm. I actually work for a hedge fund, which is a, a financial institution. Um, and I give the company advice, so legal advice. I do things like read contracts and prepare contracts, read memos, so there's, there's a lot of reading. You know, give advice, problem solve on all different topics. And then on the other side, on the compliance side, um, this is this is quite linked. So they're quite they are quite similar. Um, so look at regulations, um, so which are very similar to laws. Think about how we as a firm are obeying them, or maybe not. And then how how do we make sure that we are obeying them? And then how are we interacting with regulators, which are a little bit like governments. So they setting the rules. And then we have to keep things like logs and records to make sure that we show how we're complying with these with these rules. So we have to keep up with all the new developments as well. I guess the easiest way is it's finance. So as I said, it's a hedge fund. So what we do is we take money from all of our investors and they can be all different types of investors. They can be individuals, it's like super rich people like Mark Zuckerberg who runs Facebook. So people like him, um, or it can be things like uh, companies or pension funds or wealthy, actually wealthy countries. So they give us their money and then we invest all of that money in, in one in one pot and we invest in products like stocks or shares or bonds um, or indices and we um, as a firm actually invest all over the world so we're based in the UK and the US but we invest also in Europe in Asia and all different types of markets it's a way so that if one type one country or one type of investment's not going so well we're also invested in lots of other things so we can make sure we're kind of constantly balancing and then the goal is to make a profit that bit's very simple, um, although much harder to do. And then we take a piece of that profit. That's what the investors are paying for. So that's that's what we do. So it's um, we work alongside banks, but we we ourselves are not not a bank. The best things for me. There's always something new. So I'm always 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 learning something new. Perhaps even on a bit like a daily basis. And we work. My specific role, I work with lots of different teams within our company. So I get to know lots of different people. Um, it's very varied, which, which I like. And as I said before, when I was talking about what we do, we, there's lots and lots of reading, which I personally like. I know it's not for everyone. On the worst things, I guess I would say two things. Sometimes it's really hard to juggle all the different things you're doing because you're working with different people, working, doing lots of different things. And it's really hard to figure out what's important because everyone thinks their project's important, which is not always the case. So trying to balance delivering everything on time and making sure that people are you know, happy that you've delivered the project and you're doing all of those different things at the same time. And then also sometimes you have to say no. And by that, I mean, somebody might come along and say, we really want to do you know, X, Y, and Z, and it's just not possible. Like it's against the law or there's regulation or, or whatever. And you try your hardest, you think of all the different solutions and it's just not going to work. And so having to deliver that message is hard and it's not something we like to do. I actually, I grew up in the UK and when I went to university, I studied law which uh, is possible in the UK. I know it's not possible in the US. And I was very lucky. I actually studied law and German law. So I studied uh, for two years in the UK, and then I went to Germany and studied there for a year and then came back to the UK, which I loved because I, I love languages. So I got to combine studying law, which I knew I wanted to be a lawyer since I was a, a teenager. And I also got to go abroad for a year. I think um, a lot of different things when I finished university I went to law school for a year which is what you do in the UK so I had worked at a law firm so that was like check I had my law, legal experience after I moved to the US I also worked for another hedge fund so I had that experience so I had some you know finance experience I actually to admit when I joined this firm I didn't have much official compliance experience like I'd never had a, a compliance role but I had learned a lot about compliance in my other roles. Um, so when I was interviewing, I just showed them what I had learned from, from listening and watching other people and showed them that I was a quick learner. And I also 
I guess, demonstrated how, if I got the job, how I would do that job, even if I couldn't say, hey, I've done this job before. So I think taking all of those together helped me land this job. You have to have an interest in it. Work long hours and there's a lot going on. And so, you know, you have to be, you have to be interested and, you know, you don't, maybe it doesn't have to be your, your one and only passion, but you, know, you, you do have to be interested. You have to follow what's going on, say, in the news. You know, you need to know your subject well. Right now, I hope this changes in 10, 15 years. Be prepared to probably be one of the only women in the room. But you know what? That can be a good thing <laughs> because I have learned that, yeah, you're, yes, you are the only woman and that can be, uh, it can be a bit tiring, but you won't be forgotten because you are the only woman in the room. People will remember you. So sometimes you just have to remember that it, what can be perceived as, say, a disadvantage, you can turn it to be an advantage for you. I'd always traveled a lot, so I studied abroad for a year and I'd also between, I think, law school and working, I'd actually traveled for six months and then I had been working for a few years in London and I just wanted something different. I asked the law firm I was working for if I could come to New York for four months um, and my, actually perhaps this is a good lesson, I initially got told no, it had never been done before, but for me I didn't think that was a very good answer. So I said, well, that doesn't mean we can't do it. So after probably eight or nine months of campaigning most days about whether that it would be a great idea not just for me but for the firm they relented and let me come to New York so I worked for a different law firm for four months and I had a great experience I loved it I loved the city I loved the people I loved the work everything and I kept my promise I promised I would come back to London and I did but I just thought you know what I want a change I'd love to come to New York and work full-time so then looked for a job at a different firm and moved over. To be honest, I didn't really give much thought to how long it would be. It's been 12 years <laughs> and counting. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy it. When I came over, I had a list of places I wanted to visit in the US. I've gone right through that list and just now the list has grown. I keep seeing more things about this country, more places to visit. I've met great people. So I love it being here. Uh, there are a lot of differences, but I think that's half the fun. I like, I like sort of seeing what's different to here, but also there's a lot of similarities. Um, so it was a couple of things actually. Growing up, my dad was always really good about, he was always like, you're as good as any boy. Um, I'm also very sporty. So he was always, certainly when I was younger, he's like, you're as fast as any boy. That wore off when I was a teenager and the boys got faster. Um, but he always said to me, you know, whatever a boy can do, you can do. And, you know, growing up and hearing that all the time, it really makes a difference. And it's true. It's completely true. So I would always say just because there's a group of boys and they seem louder or they seem to know what they're doing, most of the time they do not. I just always just try to remember that, that um, if you're there and you're at the table, then you have every right to be at the table. The other thing actually was one of my friends when I was working, I was um, a very, very new lawyer, maybe only a year in, and my friend was going on holiday, on vacation, and <laughs> I was taking over his work. And we're sitting there and his supervisor's going, have you done this, have you done this, have you done this? And this guy's like, yep, got this done done this, got this, and I walked out of the room with him and I was like, wow, you've done everything. This is so impressive. He looked at me and went, no, I haven't done half of that. He doesn't need to know that. I just, <laughs> I'm just telling him that so he doesn't freak out. But don't worry. He's like, it'll be fine. And I just was like, ah, okay. So I just, I just realized you could just say, I got this. Even if you don't, even if you have to then spend an hour figuring out exactly what you've told the person you're doing. And I'm not telling, not, I'm not saying like lie, but it's like just have the confidence to say, you know, you know what, I got this, or in two hours' time, I will understand this, I will have this, and that's what he did. And I was like, huh, okay, I got this. So even when you're not feeling confident, just project that you are, and eventually you'll get there.